We're in Hebrews. So go ahead and turn your Bibles over to the book of Hebrews. And we're in chapter 5. We're going to be looking at 11 uh, through 14 today. But I'll, I'll read more than that here, here in a moment. A U.S. Army officer was telling of the contrast in his pupils during two different eras of, of teaching at the artillery training uh, school at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. The first period of his teaching was in 1958 through 1960, and the attitude there was very lax in those years. He, re he remembers it was very lax, and that the instructors had a problem just even getting their men to stay awake, to even listen to the lectures, to the training uh, lectures. But then time passed, and during the years of 1965 to 67, two, two more years that he was teaching, uh, classes changed. Uh, the men uh, that at those classes in those years, they were hearing the exact same basic training lectures. They were hearing the same different, the same material, but they were very different. The students were very different. They were alert. And they took copious notes. Everything that the instructor was saying, they were writing that down. Now the question is, what changed? Now if you're familiar with those years that I stated, the reason these men were the way they were in that second era in which those, the instructor had taught was because they were attentive and took copious notes because they knew that in less than six weeks, they were going to be in Vietnam facing the enemy. They knew it. They knew that's where they were going to be. They were going to be facing right in their faces the threat of the Vietnamese army. How aware, crossing it over, how aware are we of the dangers of not exercising diligence in our faith? Of not progressing, not training, not growing? I believe if we were truly and fully aware of we, like these soldiers of those classes in 65 through 67, we would really and sincerely strive to advance in our faith. We would seek to be growing, knowing that the dangers are real. They're, they're real. What we face as believers are real. Growth is a must for us as believers. It's a must. As our third warning in Hebrews makes very, very clear for us this morning, we will see that. Let me read these verses, verse 11 through 6, 12, 5, 11 through 6, 12. This is the warning, the next warning. Concerning him, we have much to say, and it's hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God and have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Therefore, Leaving the elementary teaching about the Christ, let us press on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of instruction about washings and laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. For in the case of those who have once been enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have been made partakers of the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away, it is impossible to renew them again to repentance, since they again crucify to themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. For ground that drinks the rain, which often falls on it and brings forth vegetation useful to those who, for whose sake it is also tilled, receives a blessing from God. But it yields thorns and thistles. Excuse me. But if it if it yields thorns and thistles, it is worthless and close to being cursed, and it ends up being burned. But beloved, we are convinced of better things concerning you, 
and the things that accompany salvation, though we are speaking in this way. For God is not unjust so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward his name in having ministered and in still ministering to the saints. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you will not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. That is a powerful, powerful warning. And it should start, it should already, just the reading of that, what we've already covered ought to start be ringing in the reading. You should be being able to see one plus one equals two. We've covered these things. And you can see why the warning. But what we learn here in this third warning by way of proposition, your outline is this. It is imperative. It's imperative that we as believers pro progress, progress in the faith if we are to avoid the dangers of apostasy and its consequences. You want to know how to finish well? Live well. Live for the Lord. Study his word. Grow. Keep going. Serve him. Live for the Lord and you're going to finish well. You're going to go right into that kingdom experience and you're going to embrace it in absolute fullness as the meta choy of Jesus Christ. You have nothing to worry about. It's available to every one of us. Every one of us, we're saved, but we have to do the work. It's not getting saved, work, working to get saved. It's working to embrace the fullness of it, the reward of it, the, 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 the glorification, if you will, of Christ and our glorification with him by how we're living now. Simply put, another way, your prop, to avoid apostasy and its consequences, we or you must grow. We have to grow. We need to be growing. Now, this is the proposition of the third warning of the book of Hebrews. And what I mean by that, it is verses 11, 5, 11 through 6, and what we've read here. So it takes in all of the, the course actually goes all the way to 20, but we didn't read that. But, it, but it, that's the proposition. It's not going to change week to week. But what we're going to look at, when you break it down, uh, the warning can be broken down into four parts. The first one is the problem of immaturity. Problem of immaturity for chapter 5, 11 through 14. The second part is the answer to the problem. This is 6, chapter 6, 1 through 2. The third part is the consequences of falling away. 6, 3 through 8. And then the fourth part of the warning is encouragement to diligence. To be diligent. Verses uh, 9 through 20 of chapter 6. Today we're going to deal with the very first part. It's the problem of immaturity. The problem of immaturity. And this is verses 11 through 14 of chapter 5. Now the author in our text for this morning. He sets forth two, two contrasting cases. Two contrasting cases. Which when understood call us to maturity. He's going to show us one, case one and case two. When we see what he's talking about with both those cases, it means we need to grow. We need, we need to be maturing as believers, just like you have to mature in life as, as humans. We have to mature as, as believers. Before we look at the two cases respectively, I want to get a clear picture of the situation. I want us to understand what prompts this third warning. What it is that prompts it. If you look at verse 11, he says this. Concerning him, we have much to say. And it's hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. Since you have become dull of hearing. Here's the contextual situation. The historical situation, what was going on. Our author of the book of Hebrews having broached the subject of the priesthood of Jesus Christ, and he connects that to the order of Melchizedek, there in chapter 5, 6, and 10, he, has, he says, I have much to convey on that matter. 
on that subject. I have, I have a lot to say uh, on that matter as the one who prefigures Christ, Melchizedek, the high priestly um, role of Christ. He has a lot to teach on that. Yet, what we find, he is stopped. He stopped, and that's what we see. Concerning him, we have much to say, but it's hard to explain because you have become dull of hearing. So he stops because he senses or has an awareness regarding the spiritual condition of the readers. He, there's a problem. So though he has much to say, it's hard to explain because they've become dull of hearing. They're not able to process this right now. They, they're not going to get this. Because of their condition, they, there was a slowness of hearing. The author pauses because of that in his exposition on the most important material about Jesus Christ. He'll pick up on that after this warning. In he'll pick up on it again in chapter 7 through 10. He'll go back to that. But right now, he said, i got to tell you something. He's teaching about this, and he says, you, you know, I, I got a lot to say about this, but I got to say this first. We've got a problem here with, with where you're at, with your ability to hear this, where they're at. So the issue uh, to the severe warning is there, they have a need to progress in the faith, but they, they're dull in hearing. The subject material, he says, is hard to explain. Or he says that. He says, the subject material is hard to explain. But get this, not because of some defect in the writer, in what he's writing, he's not saying that, or in the difficulty even of the subject. It's hard to explain because of the slowness of the learners. They become dull of hearing. They, they, don't, they, they only want to hear what they want to hear. I'm going to tell you, if you've ever been a teacher and you've, been, you've taught a class like that, where people, your students are dull of hearing, it is brutal on the teacher. <laughs> you, 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 you want to go home and you're just like, Lord, I don't, it, it, I don't care if I ever teach again. They're not ready. They're not hearing it. They don't want to hear it. And this is where he's at. we got a problem here. You've become dull of hearing. Now, I'm not saying you're there because you're here and you're listening. And I think many of you here understand the importance of the book of Hebrews and you want to get this. And I think every one of you should want to get it because it's critical to your walk. It just, it, it really is. I believe it is. And he says something else. He says, they have become, they have become. Gaganate is the word. It's a present active indicative of genomai, and genomai means to become. But, but what, what we learn here is the implication of this is that their sluggishness was not uh, the case originally. <clears throat> they weren't always sluggish. They weren't always dull of hearing. And, and they had become, they had become this way. Now I want to say, the reason I bring that up is because I want you to understand something. The fact that they had become that way clearly speaks to the need for the warning. We need to be warned that we can get there. You can become dull of hearing. You can become sluggish in your hearing of the word of God. And I think, sadly, much of the church has become that. We're falling into the ranks of what Paul said to Timothy, where they will accumulate teachers unto themselves who will what? Tickle their ears. They want to hear what they want to hear and nothing else. These people have become dull of hearing. The question we need to ask ourselves, and I asked myself this as I was going through it over the notes, how attentive, how attentive am I to the instruction of the word of God? Or have I become dull of hearing? Do I take delight in the word of God and hearing it proclaimed? 
and the Holy Spirit of God taking that truth and bringing it home to my heart. Do I rejoice in that? Or does, it, does the word of God just bounce off of me like, or roll off of me, I should say, like water on a duck's back? How many of you go home, and I'm not, I'm not wanting you to beat you up, but I am a little bit. And I beat myself up, though. How many of us go home and even give a second consideration, or I'm talking, I'll just meditate upon what you learned here on that Sunday morning. And are like, Lord, am I there? Is that who I am? Is this where I need to be? Do I need to make this change? Do I bat this stuff around? Or am I dull of hearing? We don't want to be in that, that, that case, and you're going to see that. But anyhow, let's look first at uh, this contrasting case number one, which serves as a call to maturity of faith. Case number one, the babe on a diet of milk. Case number one, the babe on a diet of milk. Look at verses 12 through 13. So that you will not be, wait a second, yes, sorry, five. For though you, by this time, I jumped to six. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God and have become, or have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature. So he, he tells us the first case that we're looking at here is a babe on a diet of milk. What's happening here is this. This author literally is trying to shake up these readers. I mean, this is, this is a scathing. When you look at what he says here, this is a scathing rebuke. Because basically what he's saying to them is you're a bunch of babies. You're a bunch of babies. You need, you need a bottle as it relates to your ability to hear and process and grab hold of the word of God. And you're like, man, I'm not going to take this, Pastor. I'm not saying it to you. The word of God saying it to all of us that we don't want to be here because that's what it is. It amounts to being a bunch of babies. Now, there are four points to note here referring, excuse me, regarding this case. And, and by the way, these points make a case that he's talking to believers. He's not talking about unbelievers, unsaved. He's talking about believers. He's telling them, you should be way further along. Or at a place where I can give you what you need. But you need to first understand that this is a real danger. And he's warning against that. Okay? So here's the first point here of the four they, they were guilty of a failure to reach their potential in verse 12 there they were they, they had not reached their potential for though by this time you ought to be teachers listen the writer of hebrews would not say to unbeliever they uh, an unbeliever they ought to be teachers you'd say to an unbeliever you need to trust jesus christ that's the first issue you're not going to jump Clear over the need for salvation to the fact you ought to be teachers. You're talking to believers who are, who are born again. And you're telling them you ought to be teachers by now. That's what he's saying. They had not reached their potential. Listen. You're full of potential. Every one of you are. We all are. When God turns on the lights and you get saved... You can grow in a way in the truth of God that you could never have grown before. Every one of you. Every one of you. All of us. We've been indwelt with the Spirit of God, and He is the illuminator to truth. He, the switch of spiritual life has been turned on, and we can see things now. We can grow. We can grow. These believers were not embracing that capacity, and they had failed to reach their potential. They had had enough time, according to this author, in their Christian life to have reached a level sufficient to where they should be able to teach the true babes, 
in Christ. How convicting is that? Ask yourself, can I sit down with a newborn believer and teach him the truths of God's word? Am I at a place where I can sit down and rightly divide the word of God for that new person I just led to Christ? That the Lord allowed me to bring to him. That's what he's saying to him. You haven't got there. You're not getting, you, you're not there. There's an expectation that what we see here is there's an expectation upon all of us as believers to progress and in turn to teach others. It should be our heart to master the truths that we believe in in such a way we can not only say this is what I believe, but this is why I believe it. This is why. This is why. All of us should desire that. And, I, and I'm going to tell you something. I've had so many people over the years tell me, Pastor, I just, I, I don't, I can't get it or whatever. And I'm telling you right now, you stay under the truth of what God's word. You're getting way more than you even know you're getting. I've been impressed with people that I didn't even know had the depth that they, that I I, I didn't, I, I wasn't saying they didn't have, but the depth that they had by being students of the word, just sitting under the word of God. And when the time came for their moment, they stepped in the gap and they were able to tell why they had the hope that was within them. They could, they could lay it out. You, you are all growing, be under the word, be students of the word. But these believers should be there by now. God's expectation is on them was that you ought to be teaching at or, or currently, but they had not reached that potential. They were dull of hearing. They were dull of hearing. I gotta find out what I'm at here. All right, let's go on. <clears throat> two point two. Need for basic instruction. They had need for basic instruction. This was another point of theirs. Basic instruction, verse 12. It states, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need, again, for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. You have become, you have come to need milk and not solid food. Instead of being able to digest uh, the deeper truths, of the word of God, they had need of basic instruction, of elementary principles, the ABCs, if you will, of the word of God. They had, that, that's where they were at when they should be way down the road. It's like this, it's as though they were stuck with McGuffey's readers, which were primers for, for reading grammar in the old, old days, but they were stuck with McGuffey's readers when they ought to be reading Emerson and uh, Whitman. They, they should be way further in, in their development, but yet they're reading the grammar still. They needed milk. They needed milk. That's a sad place, and I'll make the case here in a moment, but that is a sad uh, 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 place to need, need the, the basic instructions to, to, to be only there. I love to hear the gospel. I love to hear it. I love to hear the gospel. All of us do. You know, tell me the story over and over, all the way till I die. I want to hear it. But a church that only feeds their people the gospel every Sunday is failing. It's failing. That's your starting point. That's where we start. Then we start figuring out how this was a plan of God before the foundation of the world. And we start looking into those deeper truths that undergird the simple gospel. But if all we feed on is that, we're not going to grow. And he's saying, you, you, you're, you're, you have need for that because you're acting like babies. You're acting like, not you guys, I'm speaking... As the, the readers here. But they needed milk. Now third. Their inability. They were unskilled in righteousness. In verse 13. 
For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. He's an infant. They're unskilled. They have an inability. Due to their lack of growth and inadequate diet of milk, they were unskilled in the word, in, in the word of righteousness, in, the, in, the, in righteousness. Listen, if you aren't, if you aren't challenging yourselves with the deep truths of God's word, you will find, and I, I know this, you're going to find that you're going to be deficient at various points of your Christian experience. That subjects are going to come up, and if all you're doing is, is just the basics, the ABCs, and that's all you do, let me tell you something. You're going to be faced with questions, the deep things, and you're going to find, I'm not, I'm not able, I can't do it. I can't do it. And it's because we're feeding on the, the milk. You can't, you can't stay there. You can't, we can't be there. And these believers, that's where they were at in their, in their spiritual development. They should have been farther, farther along. But because they were where they were at, they were unskilled in righteousness. They weren't able to, to meet the moment what, 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 where they should be and the expectations that, that are upon them. Fourth, they are babies or they are babes. They're babes. And that's not a compliment. Hey, babe. No, it's not a compliment. It's the bad thing. I'm going to really date myself because I don't know how far back this goes because it was an old cartoon back in the day. But if most of you, some of you might remember Baby Huey. Baby Huey was a big, giant kid. Grown man. But went around in diapers sucking on a bottle. Hey, Pop. Hey, Pop. He was a, he was a grown man. I mean, he was a giant kid, and yet he's going around in diapers and sucking on a bottle. Now, that's, that, that's funny in the cartoon, but it's tragic when it comes to the Christian experience. And it's a very dangerous state. Ask yourselves this. When the Lord comes back, do you want to be a believer in diapers and sucking on a bottle of milk? No. Or do we want to be soldiers with our full armor on eating a steak? Eating the meat of God's word. Suited up for battle. Coming in from the battle to get nourishment so I can keep on going. So I can stay in the fight. How do you want it to be? Well, I'm going to tell you how God wants it to be. He wants it to be the latter for every one of us. He wants us feeding on the deep stuff. He, we, we cannot grow dull of hearing. Do not let yourself get there. Pray in your own personal reading of the word. Lord, make your truth live for me. Real. Turn the lights on. Speak to my heart. Grow me through this. I'm not here just to mum, mumble words and say I did my, I did my devotion. And it had no impact upon me whatsoever. When you do the devotion, ask God to rip your heart out if he needs to. Lord, help me to grow in this. I'm here to learn at your feet and by your spirit. Don't, don't let yourself become dull of hearing. That's where they were. Case number two that calls us to maturity. This is verse 14. But solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Case two, the mature on a diet of solid food. The mature on a diet of solid food. In contrast, with, uh, in contrast these believers, the, the, the mature, are those who are mature as opposed to babies. These are the ones that aren't seen up by the Lord as in diapers sucking on a bottle. These are the ones who are teaching. Not that you have to be a teacher, but what I'm saying is, is it's not an expectation that they fail to meet, but they're there. They're, they're, they're able to teach. They're able to teach. Mature as opposed to babes, they have grown 
properly. Second, their, their experience we see here. It says they are practiced. They are practiced. They are skilled as opposed to unskilled. Skilled as opposed to unskilled. I'm sure you've been with believers at some point in your life where you've gotten a situation where a discussion turned a corner and you felt totally inadequate to engage in the moment. Maybe you've never got there, but some, most of us have. But praise God, you had a brother there or a sister there who was skilled, who was trained in the scriptures, who was not baffled by the direction the conversation went, but was, re was ready, trained, skilled, equipped to turn it, move it, bring it around, explain it, and share Jesus Christ with the person. That's cool. That doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. How many of you can quote the four spiritual laws and the verses that back them up? How many of you can quote the bad news, good news and explain that? Those are, those are, that's, that's elementary. Do you realize that? That's sharing the gospel. That's, that's the elementary teachings of the word of God. How many of us feel that I could sit down, you could drop me right now, right now, just drop me out of the sky with, and I land right face to face with a, 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 a person who's lost and they say, what do I have to do to be saved? How many of you feel like you could actually share that? And I, I think most everybody here could, but I'm going to tell you why you can. Because you're skilled. You've practiced. You're here. You're in a Bible church. I could give you guys a theology test. I guarantee you. You, you would say, I'd flunk it, Pastor. I'm going to tell you. I bet you, I, bet, I wouldn't be willing to, I'm not going to bet. <laughs> I'm not going to bet. But I'd be, I'd be willing to venture that 85 to 90% of the folks here would pass the test with at least a B, if not higher. You, you, because you, you, you've, been, you've been sitting under the word of God. You, you may not think so, but you've been sitting. You're trained more than you realize. I know when I start up and you're sitting there racking your brain and, and you're like, oh, he's asking me the four spiritual laws. Oh, what's he talking about? Bad news, good news. What? Those are just methods to evangelize, to share the gospel. But maybe you don't know the bad news, good news, and maybe you don't know the four spiritual laws verbatim. But maybe you know the Romans wrote. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. But God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. And if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you'll be saved. You can give them those scriptures. Most everyone here, I, I know you felt, I, I know I can see it on your faces, like deer in the headlight. <laughs> oh, don't put me on the spot. Well, I don't, I'm not going to call on anybody and have you do it. But what I'm telling you is, is train. The mature are skilled in righteousness. This is boot camp for going out there. Look at what it says above the door. You are now entering your mission field. You're in here to train, to get skilled, so that when you go out there and you're out there and your, your child, your grandchild, your friend, your coworker brings up, or, or circumstances in the world, Ukraine, Russia going off the deep end and invading a country unprovoked and killing people right and left, we don't know what's gonna happen next. And questions come up. Well, what do you do with that? When they, when a lost person brings that, where are you going? I'm going to say, you know what? This freaks me out too on a certain level. But you know, I believe in in God, and that my God is a sovereign God. And I and I share that no matter what happens in this world, that God is still on the throne, Amen. and you can know Him. Amen. You can know that God. And you can face whatever circumstances this world dishes out 
if you're in a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Skilled, trained. I mean, I'm not saying that's me, but I'm saying that's us. It's just, you, you, you're there. That's where we want to be. And, and they, 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 the mature are practiced and they're skilled as opposed to unskilled. Third, they're disciplined. They're disciplined. Trained to discern good and evil. Trained as opposed to needing basic instruction. The more you're in the word of God, the more things are clear. I pray for our young people all the time that God would touch their hearts by his word and let them see that that book is true from cover to cover. Amen. And if they're honest with themselves, I don't care. If they're honest with themselves, they will, they will know that. They know that. It's true. It's true. You show me falsehood. It's not, you're not going to be able to do that. You, you can't because it's the truth. It's truth. It's true. Are there lies in the book? Yeah, the lies of Satan. I mean, we can play those games all day long. But the reality is, is this is truth. And, and the mature people see that. You see things that the lost person or the weak, or, and I won't say weak, but the un, un, immature do not see. The more you feed on the word, the more clear your vision Amen. in life, in the word. In your experience, you just, you just have a clarity that, 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 and I'll tell you this, that's envied by many. We look at people who are mature in the word of God, and, and if you're a believer, you esteem that. Don't you? I mean, I look at people, I know people, and I, I, I look at them, and, and when I see their depth of knowledge in the word of God, man, I, I esteem that. The, the, their experience are disciplined. They're disciplined in the word of God. And, and that's what the mature are. They're trained to discern good and evil. Fourth, mature and on solid food as opposed to babes on milk. Mature people are eating what mature people should be eating. <laughs> Could you imagine if we were going around and, and then pulling out? Now, I've known people that do this, but I, 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 I never did it. But, but let's say I'm on a construction site and I've been working as best as I could all morning and it's lunchtime. And I pop my lunchbox open and I pull out a bottle of milk and a jar of Gerber's baby food. And I start, this is what I eat. That's not what mature people do. Your, 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 your tastes change. You, you've already processed the ABCs of the gospel. Do I rejoice in those? I'll rejoice in those for eternity. We'll rejoice in the grace of God for all eternity. But while we're here, don't you want to know who, who your God is, how he's omniscient and omnipotent and, and immutable and his, 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 his veracity, uh, his holiness, his, uh, the, the, how is, he's infinite in all that he is, and how that plays on life, how to walk in a manner worthy uh, in the New Testament uh, understanding of things, all of these deeper things where you've got to move off of this because you've already embraced that. It's not that one. I'll sing those songs until I, until I die. And I hope we sing them in heaven about the gospel, the beauty of the gospel. But the reality is, is we have to move on. We have to be moving forward. God's desire is that we mature and we get on solid food. There is no backward or standing still in the Christian faith. To do so is to regress and is a real danger with severe consequences. Australia has some really weird animals. I've shared this in the past. I mean, there's some weird animals in Australia. Uh, koala bear is one of them. Uh, the platypus is another one. The emu is a, a real strange bird. And then even the kangaroo is an odd duck. Uh, they're just, they're odd animals. But up two in particular, I just want to mention for their pe peculiarity. 
The emu, because he only has three toes, and the kangaroo, because he's got a big old tail, neither one of them can go in reverse. Neither one of them can go backwards, ever. I would pray that that would be our reality. We could go backwards, physically. But I pray that our reality would be in the Lord, we'd never take a backwards step. That we just want to move forward, continually growing until he takes us home. That should be our goal. Listen, it's imperative that we as believers progress in the faith if we are to avoid the dangers of apostasy and its consequences. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time in your word this morning. I pray that you would uh, bless what we've covered here uh, in, in, as it relates to your Holy Spirit, bringing it to bear in our hearts and the reality of what's being spoken to us, the dangers of becoming dull, not being where we need to be. We have to be moving forward. Help us to progress in our faith, Lord, in such a way that we are truly disciplined in righteousness and in, in, in your truth, Lord. Bless each one for being out this morning, Lord. And I just pray you bless this week out ahead of us and help us to count for you and to speak the truth to the lost and dying around us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.